ओके टुडे उसल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन सीक्वेंस एडिटिंग यूजिंग बायोएडिट सॉफ्टवेयर सो एज वी ऑलरेडी डेमोस्ट्रेटेड इन द प्रीवियस क्लास यूज ऑफ बायोएडिट फॉर सीक्वेंस अलाइनमेंट at that point of time i told you that bioedit is a composite software which contains many different tools for using them in common bioinformatics exercises so it is a very useful tool for the learner so today we shall be using the same software bioedit to analyze and edit raw sequences obtained from the sequencer machine okay so as you know that dna sequencing means determining the nucleotide sequences of dna of course this also applies to rna sequencing because rna can be converted to dna cdna by using reverse transcription enzyme and thereafter that can be also sequenced by following the same process so dna sequencing determines the nucleotide sequence of a dna molecule it was first developed by frederick sanger in the 19 in the year 1977 and the method he used is commonly referred to as chain termination method i will not go into detail of this method but as you know that after the advent of sanger sequencing method lot of changes occurred to the field of molecular biology and biology as a whole because this was the first method which made it possible for the biologist to get a sequence of dna molecule but of course there were some limitations of this method because this method cannot handle the entire genome sequence at a time but it can only do the sequencing segment wise only a small segment of dna say for example one or a few genes can be sequenced at a time so that is the major limitation of this method and it is a slow process it takes longer time but even then for sequencing of dna segments one or few genes even today the sanger method is very useful because it is less costly and can be done without much sophistication in the process and skill required for this is also limited and also it can be also done with limited expenses and that is why sanger sequencing method is still in application for gene sequencing but of course nowadays many different advanced methods of sequencing have come up and the next generation sequencing technology which is in vogue today is a very robust method which is very rapid and can give you a genome sequence within few hours but for that you need sophisticated platform a very huge investment in uh, most of the cases and also skill technical manpower for doing the sequencing the investment and the cost of sequencing is also higher then that of the sanger sequencing that is why for segmental sequencing of dna still sanger sequencing is the popular method so when you uh, this is one uh, modern capillary sequencer of the applied biosystems and this is a very popular capillary sequencer which employs the sanger sequencing method for gene sequencing so that can be used to generate dna sequences pertaining to a particular gene or a segment of dna and when it is done the sequencing machine will give two types of output one is a raw sequence and also a chromatogram the chromatogram will also show the sequential arrangement of different nucleotides in terms of variable numbers of peaks so these peaks represent each of the peaks represent one particular nucleotide say for example all greens are a's all reds are t's all blues are g's 
uh, sorry, blues are Cs and all blacks are Zs. So in this way, it will display all the sequences in the form of a chromatogram, as well as it will also give a raw sequence. So when you target sequencing a particular gene of a particular organism for different purposes, then first you have to amplify the gene by PCR. And after that, the PCR product needs to be purified and the purified PCR product is needed to be sent for sequencing. Or if you have your own sequencer, you can do it. Or you can also outsource it. Most of the time we outsource it because it is very cheap nowadays. So when you get the result of sequencing, you get this type of information, a raw sequence and a chromatogram. But I'm again and again referring it to as a raw sequence because the sequence that you get is not exactly what you need or what you desire. There may be a lot many impurities or some defects in the sequence that you need to identify. You need to purify it further by trimming the unnecessary parts or the defective parts. And then another point is important because while doing PCR amplification, you use two primers, one forward primer and one reverse primer. Now, while sending purified amplicons for sequencing, you need to send along with them either both the primers or one single primer. Sometimes we can also get the sequence by using only one primer. Say we are sending the forward primer, we will get one sequence. But you are sending both the primers, then you will get two sequences. One re representing the sense strand and the other representing the anti-sense strand. Now we know that during sequencing by PCR, whatever kind of polymerase that you use, the sequence that you obtain does not represent the full length of the sequence because during priming at the initial stage of amplification, some of the initial nucleotides are not read properly. And the first part of the sequence may be showing some defects in the sequence. So you may lose some of the nucleotides or a brief or short segment of nucleotides from one particular product of sequence. So if you use forward sequence, say for example, forward sequencing means using forward primer only, then you will lose some of the initial segment of sequences. But in the other sequence obtained from the reverse primer, the sequencing is on the reverse side. If it is five prime to three prime on this direction, the reverse sequence will be from this direction, five prime to three prime. So the part of sequence that you will be losing in the forward sequence may represent the last part of the sequence in the reverse. So you may get this part very clear, but the first part again in the reverse sequence may be defective. So if you join both of them together by taking the reverse sequence of the reverse primer obtained sequences, reverse complement of the reverse sequence, then you can overlap both the sequences and get a consensus sequence. I'll go in detail about that. You will be understanding more deeply into the process. So in this process, we may therefore acquire or obtain a longer sequence than that when we use only one primer. So mostly, mostly we prefer to use bidirectional sequencing by using both the primers and after obtaining two sequences, we develop a consensus sequence by using certain software. So there the PCR product may be sequenced into a full consensus sequence by using appropriate software 
for analysis and editing of the raw sequences. So as I already explained, before sequencing, you have to amplify the gene sequence by PCR, then confirm the product by gel electrophoresis, then purify the product, and then check the concentration with the help of the spectrophotometer or nanodot spectrophotometer. Then you send it for sequencing. Now, after you get the raw sequence, you can use a number of different softwares. Say, for example, you can use chroma slit, or you can use bioedit, you can use sequence scanner, or pins TV, etc. So, bioedit is a very simple tool which can be used by a learner or researcher which is, and therefore, Today, we shall demonstrate to you how biodate can be used for trimming and editing a raw sequence. So, both of you are online? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So then, uh, this is the raw sequence. When we get a raw sequence, the picture of the raw sequence or the chromatogram looks like this. Okay, so if you do not read with proper tool or software, the raw file cannot be read. You cannot obtain any useful information from this. Okay, but if you use software like BioEdit, then the chromatogram can be displayed in this manner. Okay, to sequence chromatogram will look like this. So the raw sequence be given by the sequencer side by side is not totally reliable. As I say, there are certain defects. So we will not use that raw sequence as the final sequence. Rather, based on the chromatogram obtained, we shall try to trim it and edit it in a way so that we can finally get the consensus sequence by overlapping the forward sequence with the reverse complement of the reverse sequence. So how this is done, that we are going to demonstrate. So there are many problems in the procedure. Sometimes the output of sequencer, the chromatogram, when you see in a proper software, you may get different kind of chromatogram. Say, for example, the uppermost chromatogram is a perfect chromatogram of a good sequence. You see, there are single peaks at each of the positions. Each position is represented by a single peak of different color. There is no overlap or there are no two peaks or it is not too long or too short. But sometimes you may get this type of noise, sequence with little noise means there will be a, a range of another peak at the baseline. So baseline will have another sequence of series of peaks. So in most of the places you get double peaks. So this kind of little noise may be there, but if the noise is very high, like this, then preferably this kind of sequence should not be used for editing. This is not reliable. So this indicates contamination. Means the, mole the DNA molecules subjected to sequencing may be not of a single gene, or a single type of molecule, but there may be a contamination. So in that case, you will get this kind of picture. But sometimes this kind of low noise may be sometimes ignored. But if there is noise like this, double peaks at all levels, and there are mixture of sequences, then we should avoid using such sequence for editing. Now, sometimes it may also show this kind of chromatogram. It means there is no progress of sequencing because of certain problem with the machine or maybe in the protocol that you are using. So no progress in reaction will be evident by absence of clear peaks at any position. So this is indicative of a failure in sequencing reaction. So this kind of sequence cannot give you any information. 
So the failure in DNA sequencing may be due to various reasons. Various factors may involve in causing a failure of DNA sequencing. They are poor quality DNA. So purification of the amplicon is very important. Then too much or little template DNA. If the template DNA used for PCR is very little, it does not have the required concentration, then you may ultimately arrive at poor quality of sequence. You may be using wrong primer. In that case, also wrong sequencing may be there. So you should be careful while sending the PCR product, purified PCR product for sequencing, along with them, you are to send the primers and primers should be selected and labeled properly. So that wrong primers are not used. Similarly, more than one template, if there is a mixer by mistake, then it is considered as contamination. And in that case, you may get haphazard chromatogram having more than one peak at all positions. Then that sometimes the machine may be having certain problems. Say for the one common issue is block capillary because the Sanger sequencing machines are capillary sequencers. They have got very small capillaries through which this sample reagent is passed. So these capillaries may get clogged or blocked due to certain region. And that may not allow passing of the reagent mixture through the capillary tubes. And that may also affect the DNA sequencing reaction. And finally, there may be failure in DNA sequencing. So we should always think of the factors that may affect DNA sequencing when we get a particular type of defective chromatogram. So for example, this is a low peak due to low DNA concentration. This is very high DNA concentration leading to very long peaks, okay? Unusually higher peaks. It's called pulled up signal when there is very high DNA concentration. Optimum concentration for DNA sequencing is standardized according to the size of the DNA molecule that you want to sequence. So if your DNA segment is 100 to 200 BP long, because that you know after PCR amplification, you know the amplicon size. So if the amplicon size is 100 to 200 BP long, the concentration of, of DNA sent for sequencing or used for sequencing should be one to three nanogram per microliter. If the concentration increases, if the uh, size of DNA or the molecular size of the DNA or the gene increases, then accordingly the concentration of DNA should also be increased. Say for example, if it is between 1000 to 2000 BP segment, then the concentration should be 20 to 40 nanogram per microliter. So normally, while sending for sequencing, we should ensure that sufficient quantity of concentration is there. And normally, if we uh, have around 100 nanogram per microliter concentration, this is always best. Then before sequencing, the experts, when they will put it to sequence our machine, they will again read the concentration of the purified DNA and adjust the concentration according to necessity, according to the size of the DNA. Sometimes there can be mobility error and that are characterized by peaks which are close together or are overlapping. See, between peaks, difference is minimized. So there are overlapping peaks like this or maybe the peaks are very close to each other. So this is also indicative of the partial clogging of the capillaries. That means the reaction mixture is not moving properly through the capillaries. Then sudden drop due to secondary structure in plasmid. If we are going for plasmid sequencing, sometimes we go for plasmid sequencing, in that case, we may encounter this type of problem. After a short distance, the sequencing stops. So this is due to presence of secondary structures in the reaction mixture. So important point to be remember, remembered before sequencing is the quality of DNA. Particularly, it should be completely free from contaminants. So purification of the 
amplicon before sending it and judging its concentration is very very important so dna sequencing is also affected by the polymerase so polymerase if it is mixed with certain organic compounds or salts then it may also have lesser activity and therefore when the polymerase activity is affected because of presence of this kind of kind of contaminants then dna sequencing also get affected so these are the points to be remembered now after obtaining the raw sequence how do you proceed for further analysis trimming and editing so first of all we have to examine for signal to noise ratio that means how much noise is there that we have to judge then the part in the beginning of the sequence which is usually defective should be trimmed properly the defective part should be removed then you have to examine for heterozygosis as you know if you are taking it from the diploid chromosome uh, in organisms where there are diploid chromosomes then there can be heterozygosis so whether heterozygosis is present or not that we can examine by examining the sequence then examination for indel insertion deletion similarly heterozygosis may also be there sometimes in prokaryotes also because say in the same culture of an organism there can be some mutations occurring in some of these isolates or some of the uh, cells and that may give rise to a variation in the sequence so two types of sequences may be there in the same mixture in certain positions there can be more than one variant of nucleotide so that can also be judged by examining the sequence for heterozygosis then insertion deletion can also be obtained then merging of forward and reverse reads can be done for getting the consensus sequence and then we go for sequence alignment to identify the sequence and to find its similarity or dissimilarity with other sequences in the databases and then finally we go for a phylogenetic analysis to establish its relations to other related sequences now trimming is done to eliminate the poor quality of peaks either at the end of the sequence or at the beginning of the sequence we will go practically for trimming the sequence then you will understand properly so detection of point mutation as i said heterozygosis may be seen at certain positions where double peaks may be there two peaks may be there so that means there are some molecules in the mixture where there are there is one particular i think the pointer is placed in a wrong place during during making of the presentation so this pointer should have come here you see so here in this particular molecule you see two peaks are there one red one blue but here in another molecule there is only one peak that is your red that means here there is a heterozygosis means there is a mixture of molecules some having red peak some having blue peak means there is a mutation taking place here means there is substitution taking place here one nucleotide is substituted by the other so this kind of double peaks at particular position indicates the point mutation or substitution mutation then similarly the frame shift mutation or insertion deletion mutation is represented by overlapping peaks in continuation for a stretch of the sequence okay so here you see continuously there is overlapping peaks double peaks in a particular area so this indicates presence of insertion or deletion in this area so let us understand why to develop a consensus sequence by merging or overlapping both the sequences as i said it is advantageous then that of using only one sequence suppose we are using both the primers for sequencing forward and reverse the forward primer will give a sequence in this direction 5 prime to 3 prime and then as i said whatever polymerase we use 
in the first few nucleotides it will not be able to visualize properly the sequence of nucleotide so for the first few nucleotides in initial segment there will be some mistake in the nucleotides or maybe the peaks are not appropriate you cannot resolve the peaks properly so this particular part will be missing from the forward sequence then the reverse sequence also will similarly miss some of the part of the initial segment but it is in the reverse direction uh, taking place so it will lose this part so bad resolution will be pertaining to the initial segment but rest of the part will be okay so now you see in one we are missing the initial part in this particular segment and in the other we are missing this part so if we get a reverse complement of the reverse sequence theoretically it should be similar to the forward sequence because one sequence is the complementary to the other this is complementary to the other so if you take a complementary sequence or reverse complement of the reverse sequence theoretically that should be exactly same as that of the forward sequence so when you get the reverse complement of the reverse sequence then combine it or overlap it or superimpose it with the forward sequence then you get one single consensus sequence but in this consensus sequence you gain in the way of regenerating the lost part from forward sequence from the reverse complement of the reverse sequence and similarly regenerating the lost part of the reverse sequence from the forward sequence so by this way by this way you can get a longer consensus sequence than that when we use only forward or reverse prime so that is the advantage of using consensus sequence developing consensus sequence by using bidirectional sequencing so merging can be done by various tools uh, one common tool used is called emboss merger that is also an open access tool can be used over the internet that is the house that european molecular biology laboratory so this is the url or the website address from where you can get the merging tool emboss merger that is also commonly used by people but when you have got the bioedit tool even with the simple bioedit tool you can go for developing a consensus sequence i'll today demonstrate practically how to use bioedit for developing a consensus sequence by using raw sequences obtained by bidirectional sequencing using forward and reverse primer both so then the after getting the consensus sequence you confirm the sequence by blasting at, at ncbi so already we know how to go for blasting or use of blast for sequence alignment after that we can identify the sequence and you can also find what is the level of similarity or dissimilarity it has with other sequences present in the database so then you can go for phylogenetic analysis if necessary so in the next class we shall discuss about phylogenetic analysis now we shall go for practical demonstration of the sequence editing using bioedit so thank you for this moment so here we stop the theoretical portion then we go to the real demonstration of the exercise so for that we need sequences so up till now is it clear to you any question no no okay thank you so then we will go to the sequences so i sent you two sets of sequences one i sent that is pertaining to coa gene coa stands for coagulase coagulase enzyme coagulase enzyme is a common enzyme present in staphylococcus aureus as you know so coa gene identification may help in identification of staphylococcus aureus it is also used for typing staphylococcus aureus isolates okay for molecular typing of staphylococcus aureus coa typing coa typing is used so for that you are to first amplify the coa gene by pcr and then you get the sequence of the coa coa gene sequence or coa gene sequence now this was done by one of our students 
and then this this is a repetitive raw sequence obtained from the manufacturer uh, sorry the sub supplier of the sequences uh, because we sent it for sequencing by outsourcing and then they have sent these sequences in this format so when they will be giving you you will get four files for each sequence okay four files for each sequence so two of, of these four files say for example the first two represent the forward sequence and the second two these two second pair represents the reverse sequence okay so this is written as first base actually first base of the name is the name of the company to which we have outsourced sequencing okay so they have written as part so you see there are two sequences this is also representing the forward represented by coa f it is also coa f okay but the sequence that we can read with the help of software is the first one and the third one not the second and the fourth one second and fourth one can be read by using the sequencer software okay but we need this first and the third even if you delete the second and fourth you will get the sequences first and third is important so let us open the first sequence so we will open it with the help of bioedit so already you have got in your laptop bioedit so if you double click it in, in it it will automatically open in bioedit otherwise you can right click then open which then you select your appropriate software here it is the bioedit so we we'll click on bioedit so with the help of bioedit we have opened the sequences okay so this is the forward sequence that we have open now before doing anything let, let us check the sequence you see as i said there are two parts in the sequence one is the raw sequence that is in this window you see the sequence is here and the other one is the chromatogram two parts one is chromatogram one is the sequence but we will take into account the chromatogram for editing we will not accept the raw sequence as it is okay but before doing the editing let us check and analyze the sequence you see as i said while sequencing is done for the first few nucleotides there will be error in sequencing as you see here in this part no definite peaks are there and here some peaks are there but they are haphazard and double peaks are there but after some time when the sequencing goes on after some time you see from here onwards you are getting good sequence you see sequences are good then you go toward the end suppose you, you can drag it with the help of this particular rectangle so if you drag it like this so it is good good to some extent okay good good sequence so you can read it only single peaks are there at every position but from here onwards you see some double peaks have started appearing okay double peak uh, only up to around say 460 it was good or even before that around 455 onwards some double peaks are appearing you see and gradually it is increasing gradually double peaks are increasing you see here in this place lot many double peaks are there so you cannot expect that these double peaks are due to insertion deletion which normally happen in that case the peaks will be almost of similar height but here one peak is in the baseline another peak is longer so this cannot represent insertion deletion rather this is a contamination okay so because there is a contamination in the sample not purified properly that is why it shows lot many areas where double peaks are there so this kind of sequence is not reliable but this for a reliable sequence it should look like this actually okay so this sequence i have given to you only to show you that this type of sequence when you get you should go for repeating the sequencing by again purifying the amplicon pcr amplicon okay so let me close it because we will not use it because this is not reliable so we'll close it we will not use this particular pair of uh, sequences because forward 
uh, sequence is not good so we are not going to use only reverse sequence but we need both so then let us go for the second pair of sequence that i sent you that pairing i think uh, you got it there is a pair of sequence of insertion sequence of e coli so if you go back to the desktop you get another sequence folder sequence lina okay in my computer so okay these are the sequences that i sent to you so these sequences pertain to e coli okay this is is mean insertion sequence so these insertion sequence are important for studying antibiotic resistance in escherichia coli so one of my students dr lina was working on esbl e coli and klebsiella pneumonia isolates and then she did this sequencing for the insertion sequences obtained from escherichia coli so now this sequence if you study with bioedit you see the sequence is good you see equal length of peaks are there and purified there is no double peak but of course peaks are little shorter because maybe the concentration of dna was not appropriate but no problem you can raise the height of the peaks by dragging this particular bar okay you come to the left then this is the bar if you raise it then the length of the peaks can be increased no problem so view it properly you can little increase the length of the peaks okay now it is proper so then you see the peak it is only single peak very good sequence very good chromatogram so this is a type of sequencing result which is ideal for sequence editing you see till the end no problem in the sequence sequence is so fine so nice sequence okay so depending upon the uh, product length that you expect you should take that much part of the sequence only suppose your product expected product is 500 bp when you did for uh, did pcr amplification your target was to amplify 500 bp segment then your edited sequence should be also nearing 500 bp it should not be too short or too long because that will not represent the real amplified sequence so now you see here also the first part is wrong first part is not proper there is it is defective so we have to trim out the first part and some of the last part will also be trimmed down similarly we will go to the reverse sequence also we will go for trimming the first and the last part and we will take the better part of the chromatogram and the representing sequence so how to proceed for it by using bioedit that you shall so you know so for that first of all you are to go to the view menu view menu why view menu i'll tell you you see if you click on view menu you will always see that a raw sequence will be at the beginning in a format which is non editable non editable sequence you see there is a click before non editable sequence means this sequence is a readable sequence but you cannot edit it before you start editing you have to make it editable sequence so we have to click on editable sequence okay now it becomes editable unless you do this you cannot go, go for editing so this is a common mistake done in editing without changing this view menu from non editable to editable if we approach for trimming and editing of the sequence you will not be able to do it please remember this step okay now it is ready for editing so in the first step of editing what we will do we will go to edit menu then click copy raw sequence copy sequence as raw text copy sequence as raw text the first option what does it mean that means the text of the raw sequence will be copied means the raw sequence as it is represented by the chromatogram will be copied from this file so copy sequence as raw text that we have 
used. That means the sequence as it is, the raw sequence has been copied to our RAM, the computer memory. Now we will use the usual Microsoft Word, MS Word for editing the sequence. Okay. Along with BioEdit, we will use Microsoft Word because that is easy to handle. So we will open a Word file. Now. So go to all program and open a Word file. Uh, let me see if this computer contains Word file. I hope so. Okay. Office is there. So within Office, Sorry, not that one. Office for Windows, I think. Microsoft Office, okay? Microsoft Office, we will go to Microsoft Word. Okay. So we'll open a Word file. So in the Word file, we will paste the sequence. Already we have clipped it. It is in our memory. So we'll paste it here. Either you can go for right clicking and paste or you can click on Control V. Control V will paste it. Okay. So this is the raw sequence that we have obtained. We know it, know that it is a forward sequence. So what we will do, we will go to the initial beginning of the sequence, enter, let me bring it down and go up, then write forward. If you want to write it in a, uh, in the, what is called your FASTA format, then you should start with a greater than sign, then write forward so that you can remember that this represents the forward sequence okay so this is the raw sequence as it is we have copied here we do not know which part is correct or which part is incorrect only the raw sequence we have copied then go back to bioedit go back to bioedit so the, here is the sequence that we are handling so now we will do the trimming the first part we will remove Okay, so how will you do it? You come here, click, you, you see these two lines, X axis and Y axis, it is showing here. You come to the beginning, click it, and then drag it. Click it and drag it. Okay, so you drag it to such places where you suspect that the sequencing is not appropriate. Okay, say for example, up to this point, we can avoid. Okay, suppose we are avoiding this part of the sequence, or you can go even beyond that, this part we are avoiding. Initial part we are trying to avoid because this may not represent the real chromatogram that we want. So this part is to be avoided. For that we have selected it by this way, then we will go to edit, copy. Okay, go to edit menu, copy selection means the selected sequence we are copying. Then you go back to the MS Word file. Now we are to show, show which part of the copied part that has been the selected part of the batch sequence in the initial segment is represented in this raw sequence. So it will be from somewhere here, but up to which point we do not know. So that's why we'll find it by using the find tool, find tool of MS Word. We will click Control F, Control F, F for find. We are trying to find. So in this find what? In this we'll click in this space and then we'll paste it, paste our sequence which has been already copied from the bioedit here. So we'll click Control V. Control V means paste. So Control F has opened this find window. In that find window, we will paste the part of the sequence selected from the bioedit window by clicking Control V. 
So this is the sequence that we have pasted here. Now we click on find what? Find next. Find next. Okay. So it has found out that this is the part of the sequence which was the initial segment which was found to be defective. So now close this window, this one, the find window. So this part is selected. Now we delete it. Using delete, you can delete it. We have deleted the defective part of the initial sequence. Now go back to BioEdit. Now look for the chromatogram of the sequence slowly. Okay. Slowly you proceed. See up to which part it is good. The peaks are uniform. There are no double peaks. Sorry, uh, you are to remain in the chromatogram. So towards the last part, there may be some defects that you can avoid or depending upon the length of the sequence that you expect, you may get rid of the unwanted part. Our sequence so far I remember was around 450 BP. So we will not take the last part of the sequence beyond say 450 BP segment. Okay. Say 452 I am taking. So this part is also having a baseline double peak, but not very high. They are negligible. We can also take it, no problem. But as we know that our sequence is, was only around 400 BP, 50 BP, we will eliminate this part. Last part we will eliminate. So by the same way, we have selected it. Then go to edit, copy sequence as a raw text. Go back to the MS Word and do the same thing. Control F. Then over the previous one, click on the previous over the previous one. Then click again. Control V. The new copied sequence is pasted here. Then you click find next. is not finding here. I think there is something wrong in the taking of the sequence. I'll go back to the bioedit. I think we have taken some additional part by mistake beyond the particular segment. So we'll select it once again. Okay, up to the last nucleotide. not the additional part, we'll select it, then do the same thing, copy selection, come back to MS Word, then control F, control V, now you find next, okay, this is the part, now it is showing properly, this is the part that does not represent the good sequence, so this part has to be deleted by same process by clicking delete, so this is the sequence that we obtain from the forward. Similarly, we will go to the reverse. For that, first click enter here. Then write the name of the sequence which greater than sign then reverse. Okay. Then come to the next line. Here you will paste the reverse sequence. Now you go back to the bio edit. Now our editing job with forward sequence is over. We will go to the reverse sequence. So for that, we will have to open the reverse sequence in BioEdit. So keeping this intact, you can open the reverse sequence, no problem, it will not cause any disturbance. So you will go to file, open, where, where is your sequence? It is on the desktop. So go to desktop, find the sequence, here it is not showing because the file of type is Zinbank, you click here, then change it to all files. Okay, so within sequence Lina, these are the insertion sequences file. We have already taken the forward one, this time we'll be taking the reverse one, the third one. Double click on it. So this is open. This is open. Now, first check it whether some defects are there in the sequence. You see. 
like the forward one, this is also a very fine sequence without any defect. Only single peak and peaks are distinct. Is it? So this is fine up to certain point. Uh, last part anyway before 452 will be eliminating no no problem. So here again we will go for editing the sequence. So for editing the sequence now, same process will follow. First of all, remember what should be done. Can you help me? Do you remember what it is the first step? Devarun? Sir. Where should I go? So we have to select the, the part. No, first you have to go to view. Then it is also a non editable sequence. Yeah, yeah. Editable, editable sequence. Yeah, it has to be to editable sequence first. Okay, yes. always keep in mind that any new sequence you are opening with BioEdit before editing has to be converted to an editable sequence. Editable sequence. Editable sequence. Unless you do it, you will not be able to edit it. Okay. So now, when it is made editable, now we will go for editing it. So for that, first of all, we'll go to edit, then copy sequence as raw text. Same process will repeat for the reverse. So we'll go to the same MS Word file. Here, already reverse sequence position we have decided. Here we'll paste it. Control V. Control V means paste. So this is the raw sequence of the reverse. Now we go back to BioEdit. Then trim the defective part at the beginning of the sequence. So for that, we will select the beginning part like this. Maybe up to this part, it is showing some defect. So up to this part, we eliminate. Selected it. Go to Edit. Copy selection. Go back to MS Word. Control F. Control V. Find next. So then close it. You see, this is the first part. So delete it. Done. Same way you have to trim the last part. Go back to BioEdit. View the sequence by dragging this. Go to the last part. As we know that our sequence is only 452. So if you beyond 452, this part will be eliminating. This is not the representative one. So we eliminate it. So we have selected it. Go to BioEdit. Copy selection. Go back to MS Word. Control F. Control V. Then find next. Okay, close this one. This is the part. Delete it. So two sequences we have obtained. Enter and come to the next line because we will have to bring the consensus sequence to this file later on. So now these are the two sequences that we have obtained. One is forward and the other is reverse sequence. Okay. Now these two sequences, we shall have to again take to BioEdit for sequence alignment. But before doing sequence alignment, we shall have to get a reverse complement of the reverse sequence. Okay, so we shall use the same BioEdit software for doing all these things. So first of all, one by one, we will take the sequences to a sequence alignment window. Okay, so how do you do it? You can do it very easily by double click on the sequence. Suppose forward sequence you are trying to select. So just double click on the forward sequence. The entire forward sequence will be selected. Then control C means you have copied. After copying, you go to bioedit. Now let these files remain like this. This will not create any problem to you. Keeping these files behind, we can go to file, new alignment. Now we will not open it, but simply we will go for creating a window for alignment, new alignment. Click on new alignment. 
so an alignment window has come here okay now here we are to bring the forward sequence from the clipboard already we have we have clicked it or we have copied it it is in the clipboard of the computer so we will have to bring it from the clipboard for that what will we will do we will go to file menu in file menu there is one option import from clipboard did you find it in your computer yes sir yeah so click on import from clipboard that means we are instructing the bioedit to bring the copied file from the computer memory okay it is brought here from clipboard it is brought here but name of the sequence has been given as out any file that you bring it here by this process will be named as out so we should change this name because we know that this is a forward sequence so its name has to be changed so for that click on the word out twice okay with some break with some uh, that means after single click then wait for fraction of a second then click again two times you click then it will be highlighted then over that you have to write forward so this is the this is the forward sequence we have renamed it done so similarly you have to bring the reverse sequence also so go back to ms word now double click on the reverse sequence the reverse sequence is selected again by the same process control c means copy come back to the bio edit control v or oh, no no control v you should go to this one file import from clipboard okay import from clipboard so this is again another out file so you have to click here so that you can change the name now this is reverse reverse sequence change the name you could do it yes sir okay follow me are you following yes sir okay so if you have any problem please don't hesitate to in, uh, interrupt okay you can uh, ask question okay now both forward and reverse sequences are brought to bioedit alignment window now we are not going to align forward and reverse because we know that one is complementary to the other but they are not same so there cannot be any alignment between the two both are different if there is a in forward there will be t in the same position in the reverse these are complementary to each other so before alignment what we will do we will change the reverse into its reverse complement okay that means we will take a complement we will make a complementary strand of the reverse strand so for that we will select the reverse sequence then again use another tool of bioedit now this time we will go to sequence sequence menu go to sequence menu within sequence menu there are lot many options we are handling nucleic acid sequence so we will go to nucleic acid we are handling nucleic acid sequence so we are going nucleic acid again there are many options under nucleic acid in the same horizontal line you proceed to this window okay keeping the same horizontal line within this you have to come to the next window you see there are lot many options for manipulating the nucleic acid sequences so what option we will do we will use this option reverse complement okay you can do lot of changes with the sequence by using this tool say dna to rna translation can be done find orf many things can be done so but what we want to do now is reverse complement of the reverse sequence so click on reverse complement so automatically the sequence has changed okay so the reverse sequence has been changed to its reverse complement okay it has not remain in the previous one but it has created a reverse complement now we will go for alignment although these two are sequences of the same gene but they represent two different segments as i said in the first one initial q nucleotides are missing 
in the last one, uh, the last few nucleotides are also missing. Similar is the case with the reverse sequence. So if we overlap it, we have to take care by doing appropriate alignment only, we are to overlap so that we allow them to slip one on the other so that they find the real complementary parts. If you set it now as it is by taking into consideration the setting tool, you use it uh, for sequence alignment as you, I showed you yesterday. So you click on the setting tool, you see, there are only few positions where the sequences are matching. Why it is not matching? Because although they are the same, representing the same sequence, but they are representing two different segments. The segments are different. So therefore, before overlapping them, we are to align them. So for that, what will you do? We'll go for alignment. For doing alignment, we will select both the sequences, both forward and reverse. For that, either we can click one, then shift and the other, or as I said previously, you can simply click on Control A. Control A means select all, select all. Both the sequences are selected, okay? Now after selecting the sequences, we'll go for pairwise alignment. Already you know how to do pairwise alignment. We are going to sequence. Under sequence, there is an option pairwise alignment, okay? So under pairwise alignment, previously in the last class, we went for global sequence alignment by selecting the first option. But today we shall select the second option. Align two sequences, allow ends to slide. Why ends to slide? As I said, the two sequences are the same sequence, but representing two different segments. So before aligning them, they should be allowed to slip one on the other. Okay? So ends to slide. This option will take. Click on align two sequences using ends to slide. So you need not worry about the percentage of similarity. It is showing 94.4.04% because some part is missing in one and the another part is missing in the other. So clear, uh, just come out of this. No need to save it. We do not need the score. Only we need these sequences. You see, the, after alignment, if you now save it, now you save it, you see, the two sequences are showing exactly same in most of the part. You see, up to this part, only reverse complement of the reverse is having the sequence. The first part is missing. Why? This is the missed part that could not be sequenced. That we have deleted from the forward. So that we are regaining from the reverse complement of the reverse. You see, from the second sequence, we are regaining or restoring the first part of the sequence, which was lost due to trimming of the first sequence. So that is the benefit of doing consensus sequence. Okay. So this part of the consensus sequence will be regaining or restoring from the second sequence. Similarly, if you go to the last part of the sequence, okay, I'm bringing it up. So if you drag it and go to the last part of the sequence, you see the both sequences are exactly same. Same set is being taken. Okay, they are exactly same. Only the last part is missing from the second, but it is present in the first part. So this part we will be restoring or regaining from the first sequence. Okay, so based on the common part between these two sequences, we can get only a small part, but from forward and the reverse individually, we can get some lost part of the sequence, which was lost due to trimming of the sequences during editing. Okay. So now we will go for building a consensus sequence, which will be longer than that of the forward as well as the reverse sequence. Okay. So what will you do? We will go for develop, developing a consensus sequence. How will you do? We will now select one menu, the alignment menu, because already we have did the alignment and the alignment window we are using. So we will click alignment. Under alignment, we have one option. If you approach logically, you can find the appropriate tool from the appropriate menu. As I said, because already we have done alignment. From the alignment window, we are trying to find out options for alignment. 
So there is one option called create consensus sequence. Create consensus sequence. If you click here, then a third sequence will come automatically here. Consensus sequence. So consensus sequence will be retaining the entire sequence, having the lost part restored from both forward and reverse sequences. You see, the consensus sequence is longer than the previous two sequences. So, sorry, this is the consensus sequence. You see, so one part it has obtained from the forward sequence, and at the beginning, one part it has obtained from the reverse sequence. Sorry, you have to drag this rectangle to the beginning. So now this consensus sequence is the sequence that we need. What is the length of this? You can see, say it starts from zero up to what? It is coming up to 433. So 433, uh, sorry, not, not that one. I think it can be more than that. Oh yes, 433, we could regain it. So we will go to consensus. Then take this to our MS Word file. How will you do? Click on consensus. Go to file menu. Go to file menu. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, it will be available in edit menu, not in file menu. Go to edit menu. Go to edit menu. And click on a option copy sequences to clipboard, FASTA format. We need the sequence in the FASTA format and we are to copy the sequence. Copy sequence to clipboard, FASTA format. Click on this, copy sequences to clipboard. This consensus sequence is in the clipboard now. Go back to the MS Word file, come below the reverse sequence, then paste it. For pasting, control B. So you see, it is consensus sequence is given in the form of FASTA format. Even the name of the sequence has been written like this automatically. So this is the final sequence that we have obtained by combining forward and reverse mode. Okay. Now this sequence is ready for further analysis. So for what we'll do now, we'll go for a blast, a sequence alignment using blast tool so that we can identify what sequence it is and how much it is similar to other sequences present in the database. So for that, we'll select the sequence by double clicking, then control C. Then now go to the browser, go to browser, Google Chrome. Okay, we'll close this window and we'll op open Google Chrome. Google Chrome in my computer is already open. So here we will Create a new new tab, and in this new tab, we will search for NCBI Blast. Okay, so we will write Blast here. Enter. We're searching for Blast. Click on Blast. And this is the blast window. So here we'll go for a nucleotide blast. A nucleotide blast, as you know, this is the space in which we are to upload the query sequence. So already query sequence has been copied. So we have to paste it by clicking Control V. Control V. We have pasted the sequence. Now, we will not change most of the parameters, only we will see whether the database is nucleotide collection, NRNT, okay, NRNT is by default. We search for highly similar sequences, it's okay, fine. We need not change any parameter, just click last.
so the result has come you see it is matching with many different sequences in the databases genbank database in the nrmt database you see all of them are sketch coli either they are complete genome sequences these are all complete sequences you see because these are all esbl strains interestingly you see most of them represent either esbl strains or plasmids because this is a insertion sequence this is obtained by e coli through plasmids this is a movable element okay from one bacteria to the other it can jump through plasmids so this is a part of some plasmids of e coli so these four sequences represent plasmid that contain insertion sequence and these are some esbl strains as i said strains of uh, e coli which contain this insertion sequence so they obtain resistance to extended spectrum beta lactam antibiotics esbl stand for extended spectrum beta lactam antibiotics that means the uh, compounds which are penicillinase resistant uh, microorganism which are penicillinase resistant so uh, they are represented by these isolates so all are esbl strains and they are either plasmid sequences or bacterial sequences as such so bacterial sequence means it is not chromosomal sequence this is plasmid dna obtained from the bacteria because this is a part of the plasmid or it can also integrate to the chromosome of the e coli and klebsiella pneumoniae bacteria or many other organisms so to it it is showing 100% query coverage as well as 100% identity so this confirms that our sequence was correctly amplified and it was correctly sequenced because it is matching 100% to other sequences which are esbl if you go into study further detail you can also know that it is nothing but representing the insertion sequence because there are a lot of sequences here some of them may be representing simply only the part of the insertion sequence that has been amplified separately uh, you can study all the sequences one by one then we'll find so i'm not going to read them now at least you know that now after getting the consensus sequence you go for a blast for confirming the sequence or identifying the sequence so that we have done this is an insertion sequence you see it is is 1380 okay it is is e coli 9 is ec9 this is a uh, that means beta lactam is resistant gene ctx m64 this is one resistance factor or resistance gene which is present in esbl strains of e coli and klebsiella which confer resistance to the bacteria against extended spectrum beta lactamase antibiotics so after that if you want to go for phylogenetic analysis you can download some of the sequences showing variable identity percentages and then you can go for phylogenetic analysis we shall discuss about phylogenetic analysis in the next class